back with the channel for 2022. I'm going to kick off a series of interviews. I'm extremely fortunate to start the year with uh, an interview with Dan Johnson-Allen from The Bike Shed. Uh, Dan, thank you very much for spending time. Yeah, it's a pleasure, and can I say, uh, lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel very lucky. It's January, it's a busy time. You, I mean, yeah. you've got a, an amazingly busy year probably coming up, um, especially after all the COVID backlog, etc. And Are you looking forward to this year? Uh, yeah, it's, it is an exciting year. Now, you can, it's an exciting year. It doesn't matter how you package it, because... Uh, there's a lot of excitement for people to get out and do stuff, right? So it's easy to kind of, um, it's, it's going to be easy for me to, to, to bolt onto that excitement that's pre-existing. And, and we do have an exciting year, as it happens. Um, so we, it's kind of double bubble of excitement. Because you've got the, you've obviously got the LA um, shop opening. You've yeah. got the tobacco dot event this year. Yeah. Um, I think your members probably at an all-time high. I'm yeah. going to guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, so take me through the big events so, this year. Okay, so fun. First and foremost, uh, LA is going to open. Um, it's been in the making for lots of years. Um, we, you know, it's been pushed back, been pushed back, it's been pushed back, um, and beyond our control. So that is opening. Um, all being well, it'll open in late February. And then uh, we've got a very monumental uh, show coming back, our Bike Shed show, uh, which we've not missed a beat for for 10 years, uh, was cancelled, obviously, two years in running. And that's back, and that's bigger and better. You know, that is what we're saying, is bigger and better. Uh, the festival is back um, for this year. And um, we're spending a lot of time, you know, with the membership, you know, building our community and for things for our community to do, like all the events and experiences and trips and excursions and all the rest of it. Um, I've now got a year's worth of riding, so people can start riding in February and they can stop riding in October, November mm. this year. Uh, and a lot of that is in place already. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be a great year. It's going to be a really good year. I think that people are very excited about the LA opening. Even the Brits are excited yeah. about that happening. Um, do you foresee some sort of trip from like East Coast to Dover, over to LA? Is, are there going to be anything? How, do you, how are you going to connect the two? Yeah, actually, uh, I'm, I'm basically planning a... It's called Bike Shed to Bike Shed. Okay. Um, just for marketing reasons, okay? Or marketing, you know, for it to sound cool or whatever you want, whatever. <laughs> but it's a right... Fundamentally, it's right across the States. Um, and it is... Currently, the plan is to fly into Orlando and take the southern state route. So between 14 to 16 day ride... Um, and it's riding straight up the southern states into LA um, for its, its it would be a little bit shy of its one year out opening anniversary um, but the idea is to have that kind of bring the London uh, you know bring UK members over to LA via motorcycle and potentially to take some LA members back to UK via motorcycle but I've, that might not be till next year but the answer to the question is yes that we are going to ride there is going to be something that links it up and I've seen the setup on the photographs from the LA bike shed as well it's got the very similar vibe to here yeah. but a bit bigger um, as yeah. you'd expect obviously in the US yeah, so yeah. a bit bigger um, what, what are the big highlights for the, the bike shed there I, okay so I mean it's it's it was very very important uh, and if you ask uh, the owners Vicky and Dutch about um, the brand values and you know what they created uh, they would never compromise in anything but their brand values and you know what the bike shed means um, and what it stands for and because of that what we've done is is you know, we've we've copied as much as we can. You know, the British vibe, the 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 luxury feel um, that the bike shed as a motorcycle club is something just a little bit special, a little bit different that all people can come down to and hang out and enjoy it and uh, feel a part of. Whether you're part of the club or not, whether you're a motorcyclist or not, it becomes a destination that people want to come to. Um, so that was always important. The size the size of the place is is huge. It's um, two or three times three times the size of here okay um, and you know it's got a bigger event space got a bigger restaurant we've got notably we've got a private members bar okay um, which is which we don't have here um, so we have a private members bar in LA and we have a private dining room in LA we have bigger facilities bigger kitchens um, it's just a bigger venue but there are breakout private spaces that people can go to there's green rooms uh, you know what I mean? So it's a bit. There is uh, opportunity for people to take sort of private space. And is there going to be a, a US Dan, or is that are you covering both? Uh, uh, yes, there is going to be. Uh, no, there'll never be any other Dan. <laughs> <laughs> That's Irre not possible. Yeah. you can't yeah, replicate. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. yeah. No, there's no replication yeah. there. Um, there. Yeah. So um, my position is a global position. So I, I will look after or um, the LA um, 
management team will report into me. And we're currently openly recruiting for somebody um, who's me, I don't know, 10 years ago when yep. I was good. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> when I was young, we get the more mature, the, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the like, refined. Yeah, band. exactly. Yeah. yeah. So uh, exactly that. So the, the team, the, the team will be implemented in there, and they, and they will they will work to a you know they, they will work to a, a strategy, and that you know they'll be expected to get. We, we hope just through actually you know the or, the organic mm. way that the bike shed is developing both in LA, London, and globally. You know we have 150 members already signed up in LA. And we're not even open yet, so yeah. you know it's an exciting time, and it's 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 an unusual time to open up such a big business, mm. but it's not an unusual time. Yeah. Um, and I say that because so many businesses are closing down. Hospitality business side sadly mm. had to close down. That the fact there is something new, fresh, cool. Uh, there's nothing like it in LA opening, and we're opening out the ashes of of two awful trading years for the, the hospitality sector. Yep. It's a very good time to open something. There's a well, lot of excitement. I think you've, you know, it, testament to you and the team that you've created a, a loyal following. So regardless of, you know, how difficult it is to get to you here in London or whatever it is, it's, you know, it's a ride in and a ride out, which people have been yeah. longing to do for quite some it, time. So a hundred percent, and you know, and, and um, you know, we call it the drive. I call it the catwalk. You know, we have this. This is immersive for you. People like when you're on motor. You know, a lot of people on motorbikes. It's an opportunity for them to show off, mm. and everyone does it. Every motorcyclist does it mm. at some point. Because it, it makes you feel special, and now people can say you're showing off, or you'll just want to make yourself. It, it, it doesn't matter, but you know, both you know the opportunities, uh, that opportunity and that showmanship and that chance to show your bike off, whatever mm. it is, is you can do it here, you can do it in LA. You know, there's a, it, it's similar. Is that, is that what you meant? Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> is that what <laughs> you said? As you know, as a quite a relatively new ride, I've been riding for 18 months or so, and that is the most nerve-wracking thing I've done. But other than the test, in the first time oh, coming yeah. in the bike shed on oh, a bike, yeah. having just passed, 100%. That, that is difficult. Uh, you will see a new uh, somebody coming new to the bike shed, and they'll ride up and down the road <laughs> three or four times before they realise that a they can actually ride down, yeah. and b uh, you know they've got the courage to do it. And I did exactly the same when I first became a member. I I built my first uh, one of my first custom bikes I built. And it was a very low down, noisy, uh, you know, bobber. And um, I was petrified riding down there. Mm. You know, of all the different re reasons, all different reasons. Yeah. You know, am I going to be, uh, am I going to be marked down because yeah. I wasn't a Harley? Wasn't am I going to hit a chair? Stuff? Am I going to hit a chair? Am I going to run someone over? Am I going yeah. too fast? Am I in the wrong gear? Am I going to stall? Am I going to fall off? You know? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, things. I completely get it. That's I completely it. get it. Uh, and we put, um, I put a post out on the Facebook group, and um, there, people were quite kind to you until the end. It, it I noticed. Past yeah, couple of once, days, it was, once, it was deteriorating. I noticed, yeah, I did notice once people sort, sort of got, got familiar. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. And so I'll read it. I'll sort of interject a couple yeah, of questions on, yeah. into it. But um, people have asked um, whether you, there's a look to expand beyond LA, or is that, are we at max at the moment in terms of? Um, 100%. Uh, 100%. We're not at max. Um, uh, Dutchess and, uh, and Vicky's. Uh, a future and business plan is always to have around 10 bike sheds. Okay. Um, and the plan was, you know, I think their plan was to sort of have a one year, uh, you know, one shed a year plan mm. until um, uh, in, uh, until they're happy with a, a business of which they can uh, sustain sure. personally. You know, yep. this, again, this is a, a business that will never, never become a, a, a themed mm. restaurant like a, um, like a hard rock cafe or something. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It yeah. will never become a... It, you know, it, it needs to be run and, think, and run, and it needs to be operated by humans, so people yep. can have this interaction. You need that personable touch. Exactly. Yeah. yeah exactly. And that, yep. that stems right through from it's the retail, the barbers, the tattoo, the membership, the, the front of house staff, and indeed, you know, that's what Vicky and Dutch. I mean, everybody's met Vicky and Dutch. Everyone feels that they can know them. So, um, the idea is to have um, more bike sheds, um, where where they will be. Uh, we don't know yet. Mm -hmm. um, Vicky and Dutch are always in discussions. We're always being approached by representatives of major cities, um, be it private investors, corporate investors, you know. Um, but the important thing is to make sure that whatever bike sheds we do open are the bike sheds that Vicky and Dutch mm. and, and the senior management team want to open and that, that we can recreate the look, the feel, the touch, the brand, the values. Yep. All that important stuff. There's, um, we had a couple of comments around having more um, uh, diversity and that we're more women, especially yep. into into the clubs. Are there any sort of active plans to, to look at doing that, or is it just organic growth in that way? It's completely organic. I mean, the membership has been organic. Uh, you know, it's it's. I would. I w I am 
actively, I actively encourage more ladies and women mm. to become members of the club. Um, we don't do any sort of social media advertising over, mm. uh, you know, in our, for our membership at all. Um, and it's, it's quite a, it's not a tricky one. I mean, it's tricky in the fact that there is 90, you know, 90, I think something like 95% of all motorcycle riders are men. Mm. Um, now, it really comes down, we, as you know, Robbie, you remember, we're an all-inclusive uh, motorcycle club. You know, we need, you need, we need to ride the motorcycle. It doesn't matter what size bike, what bike, um, your age, your profession, your sex, anything. So um, we speak about, uh, we actually have quite a lot of discussions about how would we, is the best way to um, in, encourage, to welcome, to seem uh, that we are a club that mm. welcomes um, everyone and ladies. Uh, and I think the best way that we can do it um, is to actually just keep growing organically, mm. um, making sure that the ladies and the girls and the women who are part of the club currently are in an environment that they're happy to be in, yep. which I think if you asked all of them, they'd say yes, because they are growing. The, mm. the, 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 the women membership is, is constantly growing. Um, and then I think the best way, of which we all kind of agree, is that when we are doing our events and experiences and trips and excursions, is to make sure that um, we have the ladies uh, in, in those trips. Mm. And I think you're in a, in a good position because like, motorbikes don't discriminate. Firstly, 100%. right. So actually, your values and your the way you position the bike shared. It's you're you know you're not gender specific. You're not race specific. You don't talk about those elements. And actually, not talking about it is means it's open for all. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking about it recently, and I thought you know it, it's I liken it to something like I always say that the bike shared. Um, there's no social barrier mm. um, because all those barriers are instantly knocked down by the fact that you're that you have one thing in common and one thing the one reason why you're here. Mm -hmm. And that is you're a bike shed member. And when you become a bike shed member, you're becoming part of something very, um, uh, very special. Um, first of all, you're becoming part of a, of a community of motorcycle riders, but you're becoming a part of a community of people who come here uh, and, you know, and are um, representative of the bike shed club, uh, are representative of the brand values of the fact that you can come down here and get great food and good coffee and, you know, and... The members that we have are that way, a bit more that way inclined than a um, than a, a, a greasy bacon sandwich and a cup of tea and a paper cup. Mm. Nothing wrong with that at all. That's not what we do, mm. and the membership uh, and the club members know that. So there's no social barriers. You can come down here at any club night as an individual, uh, as an individual, um, you know, uh, um, new member, and you can engage in conversation mm. immediately and feel very welcome. And you can feel like part you have been part of this club for a long time. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I've I've felt very welcome since day one, and, and I said on the um, on the post, I think when I first applied and I sat down with you, and yeah, you know, it felt like I felt like I was. This is no disrespect to you. I felt like I was going into a pair of old shoes. You know, you, yeah, yeah, you, you yeah. felt comfortable straight away. Yes, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, yeah. And um, you look much better than a pair of old shoes, by the way. But depending um, on what the shoes are, turn on the shoes. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so in terms of the other big event for the UK side, yeah. uh, this year, obviously at Tobacco Dot, I've never been to that event. What can yeah. people expect if they haven't been before? So, it's called the Bike Shed Show. Mm -hmm. So, what you don't expect is like Motorcycle Live or MCN Show. It's it's a show. However, it's really immersive. Um, you know, we spend a lot of time making sure that the food is the best it can be. We make a lot, a lot of time making sure that the bars are great and look good, and the beverages are all, you know, cold, and the and the and the, and the tea and coffee are all hot, and they're all art. So you, what you're getting is um, you're getting something very special. You're getting something that has had an awful lot of time and attention to detail applied to it. Um, you're going to see some of the best custom motorcycle builders um, in England, Europe, globally. You're going to see um, the other side of some commercial brands that, and the stuff that they can do, whether it's Royal Enfield or Ducati and, 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 and the bikes that they do. Um, you're going to see great music. We've got live bands playing all, mm -hmm. uh, all three days. Um, so it's an exper a whole experience rather 100%. than just a show you, can, you go to. You can come down with your family and, and spend a whole day chilling out um, you know, and you can spend as much or as little time looking at motorbikes, um, looking at all the kit there's going to be, the new innovations, the retro, the vibe, you know, the custom builds, 
Um, or you can just hang out and eat good music, uh, you know, listen to the music, eat some good food, have some drinks, uh, and just watch the world go you by. You could eat, you know, eat the music, listen to the food. You can do that. Yeah. Yes, that's what. Yeah. yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> it's so, a cool show. It's it's it's. I like more I think about it, um, and the fact that, you know, Vicky was its, it, it, Vicky and Dutch were the curators of the show. Mm. They're still, Vicky still holds the reins. She still regards it as her baby. She's over everything from every single detail. It has to be 100% right. And because of that, um, it's, I mean, I've been in the events industry for many, many years, many years, all my working life actually, apart uh, until I came here. And I've got to say, for attention to detail as a show that's been put on the public, it's one of the best, it's probably the best custom show, um, if not in the world, you know, definitely Europe. And I'm looking forward to it. Uh, it's really special. You get a really special vibe. You, you get to feel as though you're, um, you're, you've come a part of the show. Mm -hmm. You're just not a visitor. The MCN is good. They, it serves a purpose. It's commercial. It's it's there for you to go and look at, and it's a com and, it, and it's there for um, a commercial reason, right? Mm -hmm. And the and the and these big brands spend a lot of money putting their um, putting their stands up um, and their exhibits to to earn money. Um, we do it as a as a as an opportunity to show off. Mm -hmm. This is what I've built. This is what I put my blood, sweat, and tears to in my garage. Mm -hmm. Look at it. Are, are there any areas? And, and do, if you're a member, do you get free access to that show? Yeah. So you if do? you're a member, um, you get um, you get free tickets to the all three days. So the VIP okay. and the two days. Okay, two great. tickets, as a matter of fact. Okay. So you can bring a bring you a friend, bring, bring a, a partner. Friend. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You can bring a friend. Okay. Okay. That's good. Um, and you, you sort of went on to yourself and your history and how you got with it. What, what's the story of how you came to know the bike shed and got involved with the bike shed? Uh, Midlife crisis. Good. Okay. <laughs> is that where we it share? happens to us all. Is that where we share an SCR 950 first That's bike? That's it. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I was a bike shed member. To cut a long story short, I used to be a bike shed member. Bike shed first opened. It's actually my introduction to it all was for, via the DGR, actually. You think, okay. this looks cool. This looks, you know. Um, and then when the bike shed opened here, I became a member. And then um, I stopped being a member because I didn't really feel as though, and that for me, I wasn't getting out of it what I wanted, which was to be a, be a big part of the London community uh, or a community of bikers. Um, I grew up on a farm in Suffolk, always been around motorbikes, needed to be, have two wheels to get out and about, see my friends, and then moved to London. And I realized, you know, after many years bumming around the world, living in different places, having motorbikes to get around, moved out of London and realized the best way to come back into London by commuting and motorbikes. So I got back into motorcycling heavily that way um, and um, became a bike shed member, built a custom, had my own custom bike, which I loved. Um, but I didn't feel as I was getting much out of, out of the bike shed at that point. Yeah, the community. It, was, it didn't have that community. They didn't have the community. Yeah. Um, and um, I felt, uh, yeah, so I, I I just let my membership lapse. And then um, by this point, I'd already sort of, I knew Vicky, we were talking to each other down here. Um, my previous business was I was in events. Um, I used to run some massive events, have a big, a big team of people, big budgets, all the rest of it. Um, and um, I was doing some freelance stuff for um, Lord March at Goodwood. And I was finishing, wrapping that up, and I was down here having a coffee, talking to Vicky. And Vicky said, oh, that sounds really cool what you're doing at Goodwood, can you do this for us at Lyddon Hill Festival 2019? Mm. Like, yeah, cool. You know, I can do that. And it was some, some event logistics, some tentage, you know, pretty, you know, some good, you know, just a nice, nice opportunity for me to spend some time um, in, a, in, a, in a racetrack in, mm. in Kent. So um, I was down, uh, I was down in Lyddon Hill, was, you know, everyone was getting the event running around and getting the event sorted up and, uh, um, and um, Vicky in passing. You know, sort of said, oh, you should come and do this, do this for us full time. I went, hmm, that could uh, that could work for me. Anyway, mm. two years down the line, and okay. <laughs> here I am. Good stuff. Yeah, Good wicked. Stuff. Yeah, wicked. And I've got to say, why I say that the stars aligned, it was everything at that point. I wasn't at that when Vicky had that conversation. I was in a real diet crossroads of career versus you know my personal happiness and what, what I wanted to do with my career, realizing that I'd worked my entire life to get to a very senior position in my, in my career and realized oh, I actually wasn't very happy yeah. that I've spent, you know, I spent 80%, 80, 90% of my life working and of that 90%, 80% of that time I was unhappy. Mm. Um, so I was at a real crossroads and it just, it, 
there was only one way to go. Mm -hmm. um, whether I was right place, right time, whether the stars were aligned, whatever you want to call it. But I always had such a good vibe about the bike shed. When I used to come down here and have a coffee, I always said, you know, I'd come down here with my mates, I'd love to work here. I'd love to work here. And I'm working here, you know. Yeah. Uh, and I've, you know, and, I, and I'm, I've really, you know, uh, I feel, I'm really lucky. Do you know, I've got a great job. Mm. Really. Well, you're good at it as well, if you don't thank mind you. saying. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, I appreciate uh, that. Thank you. In terms of, so we've got the, um, so then, then you joined and you sort of put in place the things that you probably you wanted to see when you were, yeah. when you, yes, when well, you met it. your yeah, membership exactly. laps yeah, and then yeah, put those yeah. things in place, right? Um, so what in your mind uh, is the next step for the UK uh, bike shed? What, what's going to be, is there going to be something new or is it more around um, developing track days? I think someone talked about an off-road. Uh, yeah. What, what's I mean, in your head it's, for It's really, I, 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 when I sit at my desk and I look at my day, to, my day or the week or the month of the year, I think about, I know it sounds a bit random, but I think about what would I want to do if I was a bike show member? Mm. Um, and now that the membership is so varied and we have so many uh, different interests in motorcycling, um, so it's, it's, become, it's, it's, it's become not easy, but it's, it's become a, a process where I can say, right, now, we've, now as the membership grows, and we've got such a, 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 a getting a larger and larger pool of interested, engaging people, um, riders who want to be part of the community, who want to go and do some amazing things. Mm. Um, the activity becomes part of the experience because we, it, the, the thing that makes it so much fun is doing it together mm -hmm. and a continuation of the experience, the banter, the jokes, the, <clears throat> the stories that you've. That you've uh, that you've told one another whilst on one of these experiences, the 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 friends you might have made, the the contacts you've, made, do you know what I mean? Mm. And so, um, so the answer to the question is, I will continue to to develop the community of riders. Um, you know, the more and more members are welcome, the more and more members we get, it's it becomes easier for me to be able for more and more opportunity to go and do wheelie schools, scrambles, track days. Yeah, I had uh, some guy. Uh, one person asked about Jim Carner events type uh, rather yeah. than car park type thing yeah yeah I was yeah I was 100% so you know we we have got I mean we've got opportunities to join bike shed a bike shed rally team if you're interested in off road we've got brands hatch exclusively booked for three dates uh, this year already if you want to come and do some track days we've got Lydon Hill our festival which is a track um, we've got ride out every month so you know, people, I don't want people to think about we're just a one trick pony. If you want to learn how to do wheelies, we'll do wheelies. If you mm. want to learn how to go and ride off road, we do that. If you want to go and learn how to flat track, we'll do that. If you want to go and learn how, learn how to actually get your knee down around a track, I'm working with people who can do that. And a lot of these are open for people like me that have never done a track day before. 100%. Yeah. I would, for, for people who, I, our biggest. Uh, by far, when I put on a track day, our biggest category of rider are the novice to intermediates. Oh, because okay. I love, I just love the fact that as a, as, a, um, as a relatively novice or new rider, we give you the opportunity to ride around Brands Hatch mm. um, at a level of which you're, you're competent and happy with, under no pressure from any other rider, um, with a bunch of people that you're friends with that you'll bite your members with. And, um, and we've done five days so far, and um, the biggest commentary, or the most, or the most sort of positive, positive commentary that I get back is, oh, I've done 10, 12, 20 track days. This is by far the best track day. So why? I think, because there's no bullshit. You know, um, I've come down here, and I've met some cool people. Um, I've made some friends. There's no one riding right up behind me. There's no one scaring me. There's no one intimidating me. And everyone can come down and have a, have a go around the track. And you just ride at whatever speed you want to ride at. It's absolutely fine. In terms of uh, on events that you put on throughout the year or events at, at the bike show itself, are there any events or, or days where you think you get frustrated that more people should be interested and you think, actually, that would be really good if people like got into it? Is there anything that's been under... Overwhelming from an attendance perspective, um, we thought actually people should really do that. It's no, not really. I, I think you know we're lucky because I, I think this is the other thing about um, it's 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 the FOMO, right? Hmm. It's I'll do something and then then it's more often people come back and say, oh, that looked brilliant, okay. because they didn't really maybe I didn't sell it properly, maybe, well not sell it, maybe I didn't I didn't describe it correctly yeah. or maybe I didn't 
I didn't. So it's more. I think the frustration is more of people that have missed stuff where they've gone, "Oh, that looked bloody brilliant." Yeah. You know, the the post. A great example is that I don't know if did you see the posty bike tour, that thing that went up on. The I social did. Network, yes. Yeah. Which is one of yeah. the best things we did last year on a motorbike. Yeah, it looked fun. It was brilliant. It was it was fun. Hundred percent. There's no other way for it. If you want a light-hearted, really good opportunity to to hang out with people, to get on a bike and do so, not you know, a, a, a level of, you know, not the most high level of concentration thinking needed riding a motorbike it's brilliant it's the only event i've ever done a motorbike where as a group of people of mo riding motorbikes with a helmet on you can hear everyone laughing <laughs> you know okay um so that was just brilliant but everything so um i've currently got an event posted on i've actually got a current currently i've got an event posted for this month on facebook which is not getting any interest and i'm really i'm surprised about that okay because i think it's i think I think it'd be brilliant. What's that? What's that there? Well, it's it's a desert rose. It's uh, it's an opportunity to come down and listen to all things about how to get involved in a rally. Okay. Um, now, yes, it's obviously uh, it, it's very much um, sort of aimed at people who uh, might be keen on doing some off-roading because it's mm. off-road, right? Um, but it's also an opportunity to become part of, to actually join the bike shed rally team. Okay. Um, so, uh, so I'm I haven't seen that, and I would come to that. So yeah, maybe it's it, on, yeah, yeah, it's on. Yeah, it's on. Yeah, I mean, that, yeah. the thing is, yeah, I mean, obviously, everything gets posted up onto Facebook, um, yeah. and um, currently, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. A great, it's, we're not getting a great burn, okay. but that will be epic because even if you're a road rider, having even if you're only ride on road, you're only keen on riding yeah. off on road because you've not done any off road. Learning some skills, the, the pliable skills from off road riding, mm -hmm. are completely different to road riding, but they are. They're such good skills to know about and, and how you can apply them for road running. I, I thought that might be more popular with the Dakar on at the moment. And 100%, yeah, uh, that's what Sam I thought. Sam Sutherland won, won yeah. Uh, today. So, yeah, he was, uh, in here, he was in here just just a while ago. Yeah, he's a pool boy where I'm from, I think. He's yeah, from he, down yeah, in Poland, yeah. And he won it, did he? Yeah, yeah, he won it today. He's no won. way. Yeah. We had a, a couple of questions around the bikes that you've seen over yeah. the couple of years, so in and out of the bike yeah. shed. What's the, I suppose, what's the, the best bike you've seen and what's the weirdest bike you've seen, Kevin? Uh... Man, it's uh, the best bike. It's really hard because it's the eye of the beholder as well, right? So it's, it's exactly, the, the, yeah, exactly that, exactly yeah. that. I mean, um, uh, the best bike. I, I, do you know what? I couldn't. I know it's a bit of a cop out, but I couldn't say because I've seen, I've seen so many beautiful motorbikes which mm. I love. You know, old, I, new, old and new. You know, yeah. I, I love the new Triumph Scrambler twelve hundred. Mm. I love it. Um, you know, we had some of the Sand Raiders guys come down here on their, you know, in their 80s thumpers, you know, the XT 600s yeah. and the Tenere's, original Tenere 600s and the TT 650 and all that kind of stuff, the DR 650. And I love that era of off-road bikes. Yeah. You know, you get a beautiful um, Ducati Sports Classic down here. They're amazing. Um, you know, you get some of these down and out customs or, you know, the Paul Smart Ducati is a beautiful bike. Uh, you know, I'm immersed when you work at the bike shed you are immersed in motorcycles. Mm. So. Dan, you've been, you've been very generous with your time. I appreciate it. It's a pleasure. It. I can, and, you know me, um, Rob, I can talk all day. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any sort of final words or advice that you'd want people to, especially that this will probably go up on the members portal as well, and, and so any bits of advice for this year and, and what to do before we wrap up? Um, no, I mean, my advice... It, it, <sighs> My advice is if you're thinking about getting into motorcycling, if you're looking at this going, do you know what, I really fancy that. Bike shed looks cool. Um, I need a, you know, don't look, uh, don't, don't find too many reasons not to. You need, you need one reason to do it and do it and then come down to the bike shed um, and meet some people. You don't have to become a member straight away. You don't even have to be a rider, right? So you don't even have no. to own a motorbike. No, no, you can. Or, or no, you, we, can you can come here. down here for coffee, yeah. immerse yourself, get you know, get a look, at, have a look at some bikes, and decide whether if you want to become a motorcycle rider, if you want to do your let, test, if you want to do your license, do you know what? Do it. Because if the last two years has proved anything, you could get catch something very nasty that you never thought you'd ever get, <laughs> and life's quite fragile. So if you think if you ever thought about riding a motorbike, um, get on a motorbike come down, talk to me, talk to one of the guys down here, talk about motorbiking, and then maybe you'll become a bike shed member um, and you'll maybe make some new friends, maybe make some people for life, maybe you'll learn how to do a wheelie, maybe you'll pot around a racetrack. Um, but my advice is just to get stuck in, come yeah. down. And, um, in, in, you know, it's something... And do you know what? Motorcycling's cool. <laughs> <laughs> We all know that, right? Yeah. Well, you're not going to say it's not, right? Well, it's, you know, <laughs> yeah. people use it. Yeah. People use it. It's it's a mode of transport, but it's really yeah. it's. And it's well, I've always loved it. Cause it's it's ageless. It's um, as we said before. It doesn't matter 
what you're like, well, yeah. how tall, how, it's, how and short, it's timeless, what, you, yeah. what you do. Yeah. All bikes are rough. You can be roughly affordable. Yeah. Um, Absolutely, yeah. you know, and that is that is very that is a very important thing because people go, I can't afford to go on a track day. I'm like, why? I'm like, oh, you know, I have got to get some leathers, and they're like two thousand pounds. I said, like, no. Uh, you can get a set of levers, 60 quid. Mm. You can get a track day bike for a thousand pounds. You don't have less. to buy the brand no, new. No, you, you do yeah. not. You can spend as much or as little as you like to be able to, to really immerse yourself in these things and, and have a, an amazing time. But you know, like I said, you know, it's important. The, uh, the, activities, the, the activity is part of the experience. Mm. The experience is what people come yeah. down. You know, the, the, I sell experiences. My title is head of experience. Mm. Um, my advice is... It, if you go on to, if you like what we're doing at the bike shed, if you like, the, if you think the community is something you want to be a part of, um, if coming down and hanging out here and talking to people at motorcycles is something that you think you want to do, going out on a track, camping trips, excursions, all the rest of it, things, do it. My advice is come down and have a chat with me. Just come, I'm very approachable. You can come and chat with me. I'll talk to you for ages and ages and ages and you'll go away thinking, shit, that bloke talks a lot. And, uh, and, you, might get, and you might come back. Great. Dad, <laughs> thanks very much for your time. Really it's appreciate it. It's a pleasure, it. Rob. It's nice and, to see uh, you. Hopefully we'll see you again. I year. hope so. And I hope to see you a bit more. Thanks, I've not seen Rob. your nages. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks, man.